said, when we, you know, we're all doing our thing. So it doesn't, you know, even though we might not be administering psychedelics, you know, like we become so passionate about <laughs> and we can lose our own, you know, reality checking ourselves to then, you know, be inspiring others and actually setting them up for, you know, destruction to, in, in, in some cases, you know, because like you said, it's like, yeah, I've had this wicked experience, but you don't know what you're about to unlock in this person. It took me having a few experiences of, I have my great experiences and I'm like knocking on all my friends' doors, throwing them all up, saying, look, I found this thing, this is the thing. And then by the time I had my, and this was, and in fact, it was actually Salvia, I wasn't even working with mushrooms at the time, but Salvia yeah. did the norm. And then she just took me and turned me inside out and wrapped me all around and spat me out. I was like, oh shit. And then the download was, don't be quick to be telling everybody to take me. You know, don't be too quick. Because like, you didn't know this was part of like, yeah, I didn't. I'm like, yeah, I I had more respect. <laughs> I was humbled. I had more respect. Like, yeah, I've got to be careful how passionate I speak about this because people might be like, yeah, I want to try it. And then yeah. they just go and try it. And yeah, it's just so, yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to give it out to people. But just even the way you speak about it inspires me. Like, yeah, I want to do this. So um, thank you for sharing that and how you keep yourself grounded. You mentioned you do yoga and other practices that they helped you or, or you mentioned they helped you and support you. But is that part of the integration as well, post? Preparation and integration. Okay. I think okay. like your yeah, psychedelics are part of it and then all of this and I think yoga, meditation but also nature connection. I'm understanding more and more how important it is to just sit in the garden and look at plants mm -hmm. and breathe in smell of herbs and, and plant your oregano and look how it grows. Mm -hmm. It's I think right now in my practice this is the biggest part of me now. So it's less meditation actually now. I used to meditate every day. I was really like militant about it. But now, no, I, when I feel it, I do it, but I don't do it daily now. Yoga, I try to do daily, sometimes I fail. Okay, that's cool. That's allowed, that's allowed. <laughs> but a garden is something that every day, as you see, there's plants everywhere in the house. It just They're just good for you. And this is the part of the process, understanding your part of nature. Go camping, you know, go spend time in the forest. This is the real life. I remember when I was camping with Fernando once and we took uh, quite a high dose of LSD in, in the countryside. I was just looking at horses and trees and thinking, I don't want to work for someone. I don't want to wake up at 9 a.m. and go to the office and sit for eight hours, come back home in the evening. I want to wake up, go in my garden with my coffee, look at my plants and then start work at 12, you know. <laughs> I want to have simple life yeah, with yeah, how people yeah. used to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they have a goat and a chicken you know what's interesting yesterday i had a conversation when i was doing an interview with amy and we just ended up having a crew and it's like how many of us really know what is good for us you know we know what we need but just the lifestyle that we're committed to doesn't allow us to do that but we're, we're fighting for that you know so yesterday he said the same thing he goes oh, i had this space and he goes all i was missing was some chickens you know <laughs> so he just goes you know he's growing he goes just need some chickens in there and life's gonna be like life's gonna be perfect he's like exactly. and he's just sitting there just i know i'm just thinking why would i be thinking chickens is what i need in my life you know because he's like then he started thinking it's the connection with nature and then they're gonna produce the you know the, 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 the eggs the, the, the eggs they're oh. gonna produce the the, the shit that the shit's gonna fertilize this exactly. and, yeah, this is what life's about you know it's like yeah and then it's funny, on my way here, I was speaking to someone on the phone, we kept on missing each other the last few days. And he's been, you know, starting his journey. And um, so I just like, how's it been getting on with you? He's like, look, I'm just getting back into work. I actually started back at work today. And he goes, yes, he goes, I feel a lot better being at work today because he goes, it's like, he's just cheating. He goes, there's not many kids in school today, you know, and this, that, and the other. I was like, so really relaxed. He goes, you know, it makes me feel more relaxed than anything. He goes, I spent the whole day yesterday in my garden listening to the birds. <laughs> he goes, I started working out the different birds and the sounds of the different calls of the different birds. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, it's got you, it's got you. And, you know, just, just what, yeah, what it can do. And then what you realise, the simple things in life that just support you in becoming happy. You know, like you said, that I'm, I've got all the things that I want, I've got the right job, I've got this, that. But I'm still not happy. I may still not be in the best space. So what is it? And, you know, sometimes it's just being in the garden, listening to birds, you know, reconnecting with nature, you know. These are the things that I found that have been allowed me to integrate, ground and stay, you know, sane <laughs> throughout all the bullshit that goes on in the world. And then all the stuff that you experience in the psychedelic world and you got to come back and try and make sense of it all and try and navigate your human life and then try and run a business, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and support family and, you know, and relationships. Yeah. That's something I wanted to ask you and we can kind of start to get to wrap it up. But yesterday I spoke with Amy Tolan and she had some, you know, shared some great stuff about her and her partner and I shared with her that I 
posted an article the other day that suggested that LSD, they, this one was about LSD and family, her, a woman who believed that taking LSD brought her and her family together. And there was another article that was making reference to suicide and, and partners, you know, couples that psychedelics have helped to bring um, their relationship or make it better. What are your thoughts being that you with someone who takes LSD with you and together? How does psychedelics and relationships work? Yes, so my partner is not from the psychedelic movement, which is quite interesting. He's mm. a completely normal person <laughs> and not the norm. But he obviously has trips with me sometimes, not often, but every time we have it it brings us closer together because it feels like you're going through some kind of journey you know and you come out other way and you feel stronger connected but i think what was the most important from my point of view is not even taking it together but when i took it each time i understood how much i love him and how amazing person he is and how much i don't appreciate him enough and how I don't tell him enough that I appreciate him. Wow, man, I get that. I feel you definitely. Yeah. And then coming out of the trip, you have this like gratitude, and I immediately would say, I appreciate you so much. You are yeah. great. You've been my support. Yeah. And also, each trip plus therapy makes me less bitchy at home, less nagging, less you like, you know, we sometimes get like, oh, clean that, do that. So, you know, just give him some slack, you know? And I see this is then creating less arguments, less conflicts, yeah, wow. and intimacy is better and everything mm -hmm. just goes. Mm -hmm. Wicked. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to get into all the final details, but it, you know, because I also say, you know, I know that mushroom growing, I just look at the cultivation, can make, as well as break, friendships, households and relationships. That's one of my disclaimers. So I'm also spoken with people who say, you know, psychedelics made it clear to me that this wasn't the person Often, yeah. my life and that you know but they came to an un, you know a mutual understanding and you know was able to do you know do what they needed to do in you know in that regards so for me it's done the same in many of my like, not just my you know relationships with females but just friends and just mm. it's it's solidified relationships yeah and it's made me realize that some relationships are not as solid as you would like to think they are you know and it may require you to do some work to make them more solid or you need to step back and you know and just like it, it kind of gives me a divination of all my relationships you know in, in, in that regard so just like how you shared with you know with your partner it gave it to me the same way with my children you know how mm. i talk to my children and you know and the impact it's put me in their shoes and allowed me to see when i'm you know being dad <laughs> mm. how they feel and like yeah you can you know you can you can kind of flip it yeah you can flip your perspective and then when you come again you're like okay i remember how you feel <laughs> or how i make can make you feel so let me you know let me flip it and i could say that to say that you know it's funny i was speaking with amy bringing up amy a lot but we had she had a conversation about spending time with her dad and, you know and getting to a point where it's like yeah you know i'm building a relationship with my dad and you know having quality time and i said so that's funny because i just spent three days back to back with my daughter she stayed up like it was meant to be one day she was helping me do some editing and i was like yeah just stay in it like just stay yeah. we, we spent this quality time together but you know i said to her you know a lot of this is coming up on my psychedelic experiences and what just then a different type of time or quality time with you and you know this is you know this is coming out of that experience so i believe not believe i know that it supports you and you know solidifying relationships but as well as you know not don't i want to just you know sell the dream like it can also make you realize that this relationship isn't for you and Definitely. it might be like kite right now <laughs> you know, yeah you know you're like is that viable so you know yeah just being conscious of and, yeah i agree with this friendships relationships it tells you which like you said in my documentary, it tells you which people you should be hanging out with <laughs> and it tells you which people you shouldn't be hanging out with. <laughs> yeah, I agree with this, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, thank you, Anya, for just thank you. talking shit and sharing. You know, I really, what I appreciate about this, you are one as well. I really feel, I could feel you as well as you were speaking just now. You know, it's just those real conversations, man, because we go to these conferences and, you know, and you, sometimes we miss it because of it's all stats and graphs. Mm. And that's why I thought a Queers talk was really powerful last year because it yeah. just touched home and it was just that everyday conversation. And that, that's what I realised needs to happen as well. So I just want to bring that element to the circuit too. And that's what Human I do. Element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, with that said, can you just share more about the film or, you know, where you're at with it? Where, what, how can we support you? How can we help get it out there yeah what, what do we need to do man? sure so the film has we finished filming so far uh just had the last wrap recently mm -hmm. done 
uh, and we're going into editing. Um, it's like 80% of the film is done. We're at the stage where we have to raise money for editing. So I filmed all of this for free. I didn't get any money out of it. We had some crowdfunding done, which paid for traveling and accommodation and food while we're filming. But actually, everything that was filmed, edited, we didn't get paid. We volunteered to do this. However, we cannot move forward now with editing because like, I, I just don't have time to do it myself because I'm running the society and there's loads of work there to do. So I need to pay for the editor. Uh, however, we stopped crowdfunding because of coronavirus. Uh, we just felt like crowdfunding in the times of crisis is not fair. And I would, would feel really bad asking people for money when they don't know if they're going to be able to buy shopping next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're currently, the, the crowdfunding campaign is, is running. So if anybody wants to donate, you know, can go to psychedelicrenaissance.com and our website has a link to PayPal donations or crowdfunding. However, we're really trying to reach out to find a major donor, somebody who, you know, is wealthy and wants to support. This is a not-for-profit film, so it's going to be available for free. That's very important. We want this to be online. Everybody can click watch, no money. But in order to do that, we need to pay for the, for the editing. So I think if anybody wants to support, yes, please go PayPal or GoFundMe, but also uh we're accepting bigger donations on like custom base you know okay. so i think the best is just to get in touch with me and okay. give my email to people if you want okay. in so the description the channel, yeah what is it <laughs> and you've got have you got like instagram facebook you know social media yes. stuff so people just put yeah. in psychedelic renaissance film documentary documentary, documentary okay, yeah. yes it's very easy to find us yeah, yeah, everywhere yeah. we are insta we are on facebook we're on youtube so you can find us pretty much everywhere Okay, so my last question for you is, what is the psychedelic renaissance? Is something that's being put out there, your view type, so your documentary, right? So just so, what, what is it? What are we talking about? Can we say that? So re-emergence of the psychedelic movement, because you know, like you had the psychedelic, face psychedelic uh, kind of renaissance, renaissance. Okay, so now I have to go back. I have to go back to ancient times. We have ancient times where people use psychedelics. Mm -hmm. And then we have the face renaissance where actually Westerners, rediscover psychedelics, which is uh, mescaline, uh, early 20th century. And then you have second renaissance in the 60s, 70s, we all know Timothy Leary, blah, blah, blah. And then this is a third renaissance. And what it is, is re-emergence of the psychedelic science. And it started with Rick Doblin, MDMA, uh, you had um, DMT studies, like I think like early 2000s, late 90s. And recently, obviously, this massive re-emergence of MDMA studies, psilocybin for depression. And together with it, with the research, you have this like coming out of the psychedelic closet for many people. So uh, currently, there's over 80 psychedelic societies around the world. So those are just groups of psychonauts that just like psychedelics or they help them. And people, celebrities are coming out. You know, there was this recent documentary. Um, Everybody starts admitting, I oh, I, I've done psychedelics in the past. Mm -hmm. So this is this whole re-emergence of the movement, I think. Okay, okay. And legitimizing it. Because it's not just like, oh, we're hippies anymore. Mm -hmm. There's actually science behind it and, you know. Yeah. So I'm there, man. I believe, you know, it's all part of the same strand, the same mycelium <laughs> threads. And it's just re, you know, re-fruiting, you know what I'm saying? Re yeah, good one. Well, I like this. <laughs> And um, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm involved in the same way, because, you know, the first wave, the second wave, I wasn't around. I wasn't privy to it. And even if I was at the time, you know, it was still, as I said, pretty much, you know, a taboo subject. So I've had, to take, yeah, I've had to take the time out to educate myself. And it's about educating others. But we're getting to a point now where I can have a mature conversation because I can say, because I don't even have to say it anymore. People are like, have you seen the news? Have you seen the Netflix documentary? I'm like, of course I've seen, you know, this is my world now. This is what I've been trying to, you know, this, when I was doing all of that, you know, that's what I was trying to get through to people. So yeah, you know, something's going down. You know, I'm getting more and more people had no interest in this whatsoever saying, oh, I saw you make a post a few years ago about this and I've just seen something on the news and, you know, what is it about? Could you tell me more? And yeah, something, you know, so that in itself lets me know, you know, because again, a few years back it was, no, no. So we can have more chore conversations about totally. it. We can make documentaries about it. We can travel the world. We can go to festivals and openly speak about this now. Where, like you said before, it was kind of like, keep it quiet, keep it suppressed. So 
thank you again for sharing thank, thank you, you for, for doing, playing me. your part you know and i'm um, doing it visually and you know whatever else you do in the future i just wish you all the best and keep spreading the spores as well as um the drips <laughs> <laughs> and puffs yeah. ding, ding. maybe <laughs> when it's legal not now not now well, thank you for you having man. me no, thank you it was an man. amazing journey to meet you and i'm very proud to be your friend too, i'm very proud way. of your journey too because you're a completely different person than three years ago <laughs> i remember when we met and you were like should i even talk to this woman about my psychedelics yeah. and now it's like yeah this this shrimp shops <laughs> lectures yeah darren mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very happy to see you. just like you these, <laughs> these organisms have you know rewired me and allowed me it's like if you're gonna do this you've got to do a good job at it you know you've got to, you can't be you know and it was just like getting to know people and just breaking down those barriers because okay. i said it was just like i don't know these people and you know are they working for the government? I you, know, they, yeah. they, 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 you just never know. So I'm just like, yeah, let me break down my own barriers and then become com comfortable enough to step out into these communities and engage and meet with people. And you just realise who's who. And there's some cool people in all parts of the world and there's some not so cool people in all parts of the world. And you just want to get through and see who's who. So, yeah, I met some cool people. You're going to big up Julian for initiating, you know, the communications. And that's who I've got to get on to next year. I'm going to get him on the mix. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you again. Thank you as well.